It's uh, 6.01, and this is the um, May 4th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, I'm going to share my screen so everybody can see the agenda. Tom, did you yeah. full screen sharing? Ah. Uh, there you go. You, you should be able to share your screen now. Okay. There we go. All right, can everybody see? Whoa. It was better the first time. Can everybody see the agenda? Yeah, it was better. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Good. You got all the little <laughs> paragraph markers in there, though, John. You want me to take those out of there for you, Bob? I, I would, yeah. Oh, there hey, there go. you go. Is that better? I knew you could do it. Oh, I knew I could do it, too. Mm. All right. Um, first item on the agenda is our minutes of the uh, April 27th meeting. Uh, has everybody reviewed those minutes? Phil, Bob? Yes, I, I thought that... that I'll say Lisa, I assume, did a really good job capturing a lot of the, the, the comments that people had. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. Always a great job. Thanks. Uh, do you have any questions? Could you just tell me who's in the meeting since I don't have any screen to look at? Okay. Uh, you've yep. got me. You've got Bob. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hope Crolius. Uh, oh, okay. We've got uh, Mary, Mary and Alex. Barrett, Mary Wigmore, Priscilla mm -hmm. Lynch, Philip is on. Um, yep. Yeah, okay, I, I think that's everybody. Okay, Thank thanks. You, Alex Barrett, yep. Good. Great. Yeah. My name's Marilyn Webster. I'm here by phone. Oh, you must Marilyn. Be 369. 4713. Yep. Uh, what was your last name, Marilyn? Webster. Webster. Okay, thank you. And, um, oh, and Mary Wigmore. Okay. Thanks. Got everybody, Lise? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> Bill, do you have any comments on the minutes? Uh, no, they're fine. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the April 27th meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Yes. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Bob yes. and yeah. myself. Okay. That's unanimous. <laughs> uh, next item on the agenda, we have a <clears throat> payroll deduction warrant of uh, $188. I'll make a motion that we approve that warrant. Well, this just got left off last week by accident? Yeah. Yeah. Our, it's, yeah. It's, great. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Philip? Yes. Aye. Hey, Bob? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll remind John and uh, Phil to come in and uh, sign that. There will be a number of things to sign uh, that are on the table. Okay. Bob, are you still in hiding down in the, uh, at the Cape? <laughs> Very <laughs> much so. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. And it rains here every day, so it's not like, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, Bob. <laughs> All right. A meeting is attended by select board members. Philip? Um, yeah. This, uh, this morning I participated in the Frontier EDS uh, meeting, which is the four towns and the health departments and the school. Um, so yeah, just going over everything from the fact that all of the four towns have had at least one test positive in the past week. Um, uh, and uh, to beginning to talk about protocol for town meeting and um, the, the difficulty that the, the difficulty that the tracing uh, that, that, that the governor's had getting the tracing program up and running the software snafu that has kept them from functioning effectively up until just a couple of days ago. Um, that, but the, uh, um, 
yeah, and, and, and in general, the, uh, the difficulty with, with all of that and how um, people being asked to quarantine voluntarily because of their exposure to someone that tested positive, uh, not everybody is, um, is uh, responding favorably to those suggestions. So. So you mean the coronavirus tracing? Yes, yes. Uh huh. Yes, yes. So, I mean, as they're breaking that out and beginning to make their phone calls and, and asking people that have been exposed to self quarantine, um, uh, apparently they're being met with uh, not a unanimous uh, consent to, to do so. So, um, I, I would just say if somebody does call you up and uh, say you've been exposed to somebody, please quarantine yourself. It's a really good idea to say yes to that. Do they have a solution? Yeah, um, the, 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 that's sort of um, not where they want to be. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the same thing with the mask order. They're, you know, we're talking about the mask thing. That, so starting this Wednesday, the governor's mask uh, restrictions are, uh, the, the, the mask requirements are, are mandatory. But that's only if you're within, if that's only if you can't maintain safe distance. If you're outside, if you're six feet away from anybody, you don't have to wear a mask. And I was disappointed at that. Well, um, but, but that does have enforcement mechanisms. And yeah. there is, you know, the, the, the first offense is a warning. The second offense is a town bylaw violation in all of our towns across the state. Um, and the third offense could conceivably a, be a criminal referral, but that's a whole big process. So, um, I mean, it seems to me you could say, we'll just put it in the recorder every day. Who got called? Who's, who's supposed to be self-isolating? Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't really see, we, it's not as if we have, you know, pedestrian traffic jams in our town. So I don't really seeing it as being particularly relevant to our town, but certainly for towns like Deerfield and Sunderland, it's definitely relevant. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Bill. Bob, did you have any meetings? Uh, Conservation Commission, we signed off on two RDAs um, that were in the works from before all this started, and so we've kept them going, and there's a couple more projects that basically we're going to, people don't mind holding off, they can't do the work anyway for a little while. All right. I had, um, let's see, last Tuesday I was on at the, uh, the MMA webinar about the, the latest updates on uh, going on at the state level, both with the virus situation and uh, finances. Wasn't all that clear. A uh, lot happening, and I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more over the next uh, three or four weeks. All right, next item, uh, public comments. Uh, Hope, uh, you have a comment on civil liberties? Yes, I do. Um, this is Hope Crolius. I'm up at 1490 Main Poland Road. And um, I am concerned um, about our civil liberties being uh, put aside, put to the side uh, during this uh, pandemic. And although, of course, everyone's health needs to be in the priority, needs to be in the main focus, there are also constitutional issues that I feel very strongly should be uh, part of the conversation. So I submitted to, the, to you uh, an amendment to um, the temporary emergency powers that the state has, uh, has issued, I believe from the governor's office. Um, and would you like me to read it? It's probably in front of you, but could, would you like me to read on it? The, uh, I put it on the, uh, the screen. Yeah, could I hope, this is Lisa, could you, I don't have a screen, so um, could you read it, please? Yes, yeah, I can. Um, amendment to temporary emergency powers granted to governors. No emergency powers granted herein shall be construed or interpreted to allow any official decree to violate the fundamental rights guaranteed to citizens in Article I of the Massachusetts Constitution or any of the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution. 
And I can also read, or you can look it up yourselves, what Article 1, written by John Adams many years ago, uh, states in terms of our civil rights recognized here in the Bay State. Please don't do that, though. <laughs> Well, it's actually pretty interesting, um, but I, I, I. It's okay. Yeah. It's. I mean, it is what it is. But it, you know, if you, if, if I, it's up to John. Let's. If John wants you to read it, then you I can hope read you it. have one more sentence. You might as well read it. Uh, yeah, All right. Go it's, ahead. Go ahead. It's, it's very short. Article one: All men are born free and equal, uh -huh. and have certain natural, essential, and unalienable rights, among which may be reckoned the right of enjoying and defending their lives and liberties, that of acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, in fine, that of seeking and obtaining their safety and happiness. And so I see many things in there that are essential rights. Um, so, but I, so, okay, so that's it. And um, I, um, I, I, I am very worried that this, I'll, I'll put it right up on the screen. I don't know if you can see it. It's the founding fathers and they're signing the constitution. And it says, just to be clear, none of this matters if there's a virus, right? So we at the, at the local level, I believe should be thinking about what happens if if people, if Conway residents right to assembly or to uh, own a, a firearm or to practice their religion, mm -hmm. I'll finish up with just a couple of examples. Uh, Friday, we learned that Kansas City, the city government is requiring all churches to register members, their names, their addresses, and their phone numbers. It's possibly for contact tracing. However, will the ministers, priests, and rabbis, uh, if they say we, we won't turn those over, will that be construed, uh, you know, will that get them in trouble? Um, beaches in Maine and California are being closed, um, and businesses are being shut down. And fortunately in Conway, we have a really good feeling with bakers selling uh, lunches and uh, take out uh, breakfasts and the people at the Conway Inn, there's a good feeling and that's wonderful. But there might be somebody who is seen as going afoul of the, of the law because we're afraid and he or she may be acting very much within their constitutional rights, but out of the, in the current atmosphere, they might suffer uh, draconian um, backlash and Attorney General Barr has said that he has asked the U.S. attorneys in all the states to be on the lookout for civil liberties uh, violations and for government overreach. So I feel uh, that this is important to have part of the conversation. I'm wondering if the town would um, consider a discussion of it and uh, uh, guaranteeing those rights. I think I think it's a very important point, um, Hope, that you brought up here, uh, and and certainly you know we're we're going to follow uh, the law and certainly uphold the state and the U.S. Constitution here in Conway. Anybody have any comments on on Hope's suggestions here? Yeah, I mean you know um, Hope I, Hope I, I like you. I'm really glad that you're volunteering in town government but I, I kind of disagree with the idea of putting this as any kind of an amendment to an emergency power, um, because none of the rights that you enumerate are absolute rights. They're all qualified rights, as, as they have to be. Like, you don't have the free exercise of movement. You can't go to a, on an airplane without showing ID. You don't have um, the free exercise of religion if your religion calls for you to place bombs on subways and things like that. You don't have uh, the, the, uh, the free self-defense unless your life is threatened. You don't, you don't have uh, the right to peaceful assembly if you're yelling fire in a movie theater. All, all these kinds of things that are good, that we want our rights to be restricted for the benefit of the common good. And right now, 
I, I have five friends, doctors and nurses that live in this town that every day, whether they want to or not, they go down to that hospital and risk their lives so that we can be safe in our homes to protest and discuss what our rights should all be. And we have no defense to this virus. The only thing that we can do is, is remove ourselves from each other. There is no cure, there is no treatment. There, um, and although we, you know, we don't know how, how many of us in this town have or are asymptomatic, we, don't, we do know there is a significant population in our town that is pre-morbid, that, that, that uh, has compromised health conditions, that if they get around any of us that are asymptomatic carriers, they will die. And they're my friends and neighbors. And our restriction, our self-restrictions, you know, we have to look for the common good and set aside um, uh, some, some of the privileges that we enjoy so that we save the lives of our friends and neighbors. And right. that, we're, getting, that we're, getting, we're getting a little too far afield here, okay? Well, I mean, that's the, that, that's the argument against such a, a declaration or such an amendment. Well, okay, so, okay. In principle, I think we all agree with hope, okay? But of course, there are certain situations when there may be, you know, like, like right now, there may be situations where we have to curtail some of these freedoms, not totally, but in a limited, on a limited basis. Do we have any other comments? Uh, John, I have a, just a brief comment, but you know, I don't know whether we've gotten any emergency orders yet that Hope thinks that we should have attached this to. Um, and I would say, you know, if Governor Baker came out with some emergency order that restricted something that we disagreed with, I wouldn't mind having this discussion as to whether we should do this. I but agree. Certainly, certainly I agree. Got that, I would agree that we should oppose it. I agree too. Oppose the order, you mean? Sure. Yeah, but, but I don't know of any that we've had yet. And I'm, like I said, I'm disappointed that, that it, he, he only made it that you have to wear a mask outside if you are in a situation where you're liable to be within six feet, where you can't social distance. And I wish the order was you have to wear a mask outside. And, uh, well, if you're, walk, if you're walking in the woods, you know, you really need a mask. Yeah, I understand. But, you know, yeah. any, any other comments on that? Right, again, thank you, uh, Hope, for bringing this up. And certainly we're going to be very vigilant about you know, our rights under the Constitution uh, and, the, and the Bill of Rights. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much for uh, hearing me out. And uh, stay safe, everybody. You, you too, Hope. You too, Hope. My right, next item on our agenda is the Forest Stewardship Plan, the Survey, and Other Matters. Alex and Mary, um, I have to tell you, I went over the survey a couple of times. I think it's extremely comprehensive. Great job. Um, this is Mary, thank you. Um, Mary, I have the same opinion. Uh, you know, maybe it's a little long, uh, but I, I don't know, I'm not sure what I would want you to take out. You, you ask a lot of good questions. Um, uh, you know, there were a couple of places where it wasn't clear to me how you wanted people to register their opinion. You had a long list of statements and maybe next to it, the person would sort of write in, you know, agree or don't agree or whatever. Uh, no, our formatting will be changed when, we, this is Mary, when we um, launch it, uh, we're debating either Google Forms or SurveyMonkey and great. the formatting will take shape in that on that platform great but thank thank you for your comments apologize for the you, i mean you just received it today and if you need more time other mem um other members of the board totally understand that i had some reviewers that assisted us with contact and staying loyal to the language of our education mandate and they they needed all last week to get back to me so that's how that evolved but uh, any other comments on it would be welcomed yeah. And appreciated. Uh, Mary, um, this is uh, Phil Cantor. Yep. So 
I, I have a question just about, so I, I, I liked your addition of question 14. Um, yeah. And I uh, thank you for that. I feel like that was sort of as a result of our conversation from the week before. Um, yes. And, and, and so I, I wondered uh, um, whether you'd be willing to sort of add a C to that. Um, and that, how interested are you as a private landowner in participating in such a program? With your own okay. private land. Alex, I think that's okay. What do you think, Alex? Definitely. Okay. So could you give me that wording again, Phil? Um, C would be how interested are you in participating as a private landowner in such a program in Conway? See. Yeah, we did tweak it a little, but actually we had had a, the, the bulk of it really before even last week. We had started working with it and then added a few, but it did help to listen last week and just hear. I feel like I'm beginning to understand how Conway thinks about <laughs> the environment and forest, and so that was good. Um, and does anybody else have any um, input? <coughs> this is I Marilyn. Think you, I think you covered all the bases, Mary and Alex. Very okay. comprehensive. Um, any other comments on, on, we, on the draft? Yeah, this is Marilyn. Um, I, I, ahead, walk, Marilyn. I walk the Old Town Forest regularly, and um, as well as the State Forest and... Um, I have not seen the survey, but I was reading through parts of your proposal, and um, may I ask some questions about that? Sure. Um, in 1.2, in the understanding of the project, you talk about ecological forestry as a philosophy that perpetuates, et cetera, and I'm wondering if you could please state that in plain English. Uh, okay. I will... Give it a shot, and Alex, chime in. Um, when I first went to forestry school, it was a while ago, graduated UMass, and we were taught how to grow timber. Timber management really was the core of our education. Through the years that I've practiced, it's almost been 40 years I've practiced in West County, forestry has evolved and changed, and the academic discipline now is instructing new forestry students and has, through continuing education, has taught me that we look at the whole forest. We look at all the values that economic, social, aesthetic, wildlife, we try to, when we're assessing and evaluating a forest, we try to see all of those different layers and view it as a dynamic ecosystem. Therefore, if we're going to go in and create disturbance, we need to be mindful of all of those other values that the forest is providing to society, it, not just human, but to our society, but as well as all of the other components within that ecosystem. So if we're going to go in and do a disturbance, um, that might be a gentle word for timber harvest. If we're going to do a timber harvest, what we should be thinking about is how are we going to come in and disturb this forest system in a way that mimics what nature's doing and on a smaller scale and come away with the structure, the basic structure and functionality of that forest ecosystem intact when we leave. And that's my understanding of ecological forestry. I hope that was better. And please chime in, Alex. <laughs> Well, and so as a town, I mean, because you, you list a variety of things. As a town, are we able to set our priorities? Can we say that, you know, our greatest priority is carbon sequestration and our lowest priority is earning money off of timber? Um, Marilyn, that's, we're hoping. Um, the way the grant was set up is very tight window for delivery and execution on Alex and I. But our hope, our vision for this project and process within your community is just to do exactly that. Our survey will go out. We're going to have two public forums through Zoom and 
we have a lot of discussion right now over how to pull it off well. But we're, our agenda is to help you define your value system and your vision for the community force within Conway. And that's, I, I hope we're successful. And, and I'm sure, uh, given what I, uh, what I took away from last week's meeting, you're going to tell us if we're not. <laughs> so does that answer your question? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we get to, or be clear, because, you know, in the Conway section of the grant proposal, it does say, talk about the priorities of the community. Um, so I wanted to be sure that we really do get a, a, a say in that. We, if, if we are successful, you will drive this. You'll be the engine. Our goal is to, Alex and I call it a community-based forest stewardship planning process, where we see it one way, but you value it in an entirely different way. You live there. You love this place. So tell us how you want to see your, your forest look in 10 years, 20 years. Marilyn, we're all in agreement on that. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> in, in agreement on what exactly? That it be community-based and that it would be a lot of community input. Okay. And that's what we had a lot of talk last week. I guess you weren't here last week. But no, was, I just yeah. heard about all of this this yeah. week. Yeah. And, and, and certainly the survey is comprehensive enough that if we get enough uh, response to the survey, it'll certainly guide uh, Mary and Alex uh, in, this, in this project. And, you know, I know that walking together is challenging these days. But would we have like a, an opportunity to like be out or maybe on an individual, well, maybe not everybody individually, but like would it be possible to like go for a walk with you and hear what you see? Um, one idea that we have been discussing is taking videos and posting them on the web page, your town's web page, so that you can see what we see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. once we get the survey back and we have the first forum, we'll also have a better sense of what is special to the community upon these forest properties. I mean, Alex has spent time, I spent some time, limited time last week with Beth Gershman out on the Fournier Project and a state forester, your community forester, Allison Wright. So I'm getting a sense of it. It's a beautiful, it's a wonderful piece of property. Alex spent a day out there, so he now has seen it, studied it, but still we'd love to hear what you find special about it. And the video platform might work. Any ideas you have, please send them our way. <laughs> I could give you my email after this meeting. Marilyn, do you know Beth Gershman? I do not, or at least not that I know. <laughs> we, could, we, we could get you her email address. She would love to talk to you about it because she joined Mary or at least Alex on the walk they went on last week. Well, I would love to go for a walk with you in the Old Town Forest, if that's an option. Um, yeah, I can give you my phone number if you want to. If you want to give me a call, and we could try to set that up. Sure. Alex, what do you think about that? Yeah, actually, Alex hasn't been up there, so that that could really work. It's a process of. You know, we have to be getting our job done too. But <laughs> yes. I, I could, I would try to spend more time with you, and we could let Alex do his thing. Yeah. How does that sound out? Yeah, if I tag along while you're doing your job. All right. Alex, you're not saying anything. <laughs> what do you think? About oh, I can, that? I can chime in. Um, no, I think Marilyn, I'd love to see, you know, see the forest through through your eyes a little bit up there. Like I. Mary and I walked around a little bit last week and that was my introduction to the place. And, you know, I would echo everything that you've said so far, Mary. And I think, you know, in terms of the, the time and walking around the forest, you know, there are, you know, we, 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 we cannot in terms of like our whole time management and our financial management of the project, like we can't spend, you know, four hours walking with each resident of Conway, although yeah, we, I understand that, that would be really cool. Um, <laughs> So I think, you know, I'm sure we can, yeah, I said this last week, but, you know, in an ideal world, we'd host a couple of like community woods walks and walk around and look at stuff. But I just, that's not particularly responsible right now, given everything. And right. um, so I think we're going to, 
pursue the the video and also you know some maybe a little bit of curated woods walking where we can efficiently tag on a you know half hour 45 minutes or you know just a little time in the forest to look at stuff together um on a you know i typically will be going down there for a you know eight hour field day and i can tack on a little bit at the beginning or maybe around lunchtime or something like that so that we can you know get as much direct input from from people who are really interested and know the place well because that would be really helpful to us also okay thanks Thanks, Marilyn. Um, any other questions on the survey? Any comments on the survey? So, so on the website, um, it says look for here, look for survey here starting May fifth. So, starting tomorrow, others of us will be able to see it. Well, that that would be my next discussion. This is Mary. We had hoped to have something in the current, which I understand it it didn't make it in there, which is fine. And so we, we're trying to figure out now how to distribute it widely. Um, our ideas are to, I was speaking with Tom some of the, what this morning, your, your administrator, and our thinking is to have it linked to our platform, either Google Forms or SurveyMonkey, and have access through your web page to be able to do it online which for us is, is efficient, it'll feed right into the, the analysis piece. Um, another idea that I spoke of with Tom was perhaps having it sent out with the town report, which we, Tom's understanding would be we'd have to take responsibility for folding and packaging and getting it ready for inclusion. Yeah, um, sorry, I, I seem to have miscommunicated that. What we're okay. sending out with the town report is what was going in Conway Currents. Correct. That's that's what I thought. It was going. So okay. Be, not, not not the survey as a whole. Yeah, it would be our small notice. Correct. <coughs> yes. Yes, and, and that gives the the, the website address. That? Does do you know the timing on that, Tom? Um, it's gone to the printer already. Okay. Good. And that will give. Um, the web, how to get to it on your town web page, correct? Yes. All righty. I think the best way to do this is the way you suggested, Mary, to have it, um, you know, answered online so that all that data goes into your um, your analysis spreadsheet uh, and it would be much, much easier to, to get it done that way. But we are we are concerned about those who might not have access to that technology. So I was going to have my phone number available. So people could call and I would send them a paper copy and we could hand enter that because our goal is to reach as many, accommodate as many people as possible. Sure. So that was yeah, one of our ideas because um, we, we will have a print version available. Mm -hmm. And at one point we had maybe discussed having a pickup spot in town, but Tom didn't seem, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, you didn't seem too keen on that because of our current situation. Could we explore that oh. idea further or? Yes, I, I said it was okay to have maybe uh, some envelopes to have people take surveys and return them just inside the door of the town office. Okay, that could work. We'll, we'll make sure that you have the materials to do that. Do you agree, Alex? Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I think our, our main goal for tonight is to was to have you guys, the, the, the select board, uh, just review those questions and make sure they, they seem okay by you. And then my my job tonight is going to be to turn them into a website that everybody can access. Any other questions for Alex on the survey itself? Bobby, you okay with it? I, I'm good. Marilyn. Yeah. When you were walking last in the old town forest, did you lose a cell phone? No. Somebody up on Cricket Hill has reported they found a cell phone in the old town forest. No, I found a toy dog. <laughs> and they're looking for the owner. Okay. Nope. Okay. Uh, Bob, do you have any comments? I'm, I'm good. Phil. Thank you for asking. Yeah, just one comment is I was asked to express just. Um, uh, uh, concern about the the Maynard Cemetery in the old that that whatever whatever is done in the in the old forest that there be special care to uh, 
to, uh, about the, the old family cemetery in there and that a lot of people don't understand exactly the significance of who's buried there. And that's Malachi Maynard, who is a Conway Selectman, um, a Conway Minuteman um, that marched on Lexington. But more, more sig historically speaking, he's uh, famous now because he wrote, uh, he, he was Conway's delegate to the Constitutional Convention to, to decide whether Conway would approve of the US Constitution. And of course we voted no, but um, <laughs> he, wrote, he, he wrote our response and it's a four page, very eloquent letter that was published nationally. And it's now known as the nation's premier um, pre-constitutional anti-slavery tract. And um, within academia, it's been the subject of three major con academic conferences in the past few years and hundreds and hundreds of papers. So he's like, he's historically, he's like hot stuff. We get regular requests about him. Um, and people actually have, have won in the past year have come up wanting to see that cemetery just to pay their respects to him. And um, I highly recommend looking at just Google Malachi Maynard and read the power of his writing in 1787 against slavery, um, which was the town's opinion um, as the reason why we can't enter into the constitution. It's fabulous. So just uh, have a special care for that cemetery while you're up there and uh, know that there's someone really special buried there. That's all. Alex and Mary, you Thank guys you, had Philip. no idea what you were getting into here. Yeah. Well, I, no, we, went to that we went to that cemetery last week and it's, yeah. uh, it's beautiful and it's been just beautifully sort of protected around it. It's a really special spot. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so but I, I had no I, I had no idea that such an awesome person was buried there, and I just have yeah. to say, go go Conway. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, so with Phillips' addition of fourteen C to the draft, are yeah. we ready to approve that survey? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Philip. Yeah. Yes. So that we approve the uh, survey. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Philip. Yes. Robert. Aye. And I'll be an eye as well. And thank you, Alex and Mary. As I say, a very comprehensive survey and just that one addition that Philip suggested and we're ready to go. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time this evening and all your comments. That, thank you. I think that's it for us. Do you agree, Alex? Or? Perfect. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Alex. Thanks, Mary. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> All right, next item on our agenda is further discussion on the new Mohawk Woodlands Partnership Grants. Thomas, do we have anything else on this? I think, I think Phil does. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, where we left off last week was, uh, you know, trying to get a hold of Peggy Sloan to get the, the rest of, to, just to, and get connected with Williamstown because they're the leader in this uh, carbon sequestered carbon sequestration, carbon uh, market uh, um, and, and uh, program that they're rolling out. Um, and uh, I was able to do that today, had a long conversation with uh, their town uh, manager um, um, and, and got full permission to, uh, you know, they want us to participate in the project. They'll do the oversight because it's nothing extra for them. Um, but that doesn't even come up. For, for the purposes of this grant, um, which is the $20,000 limit, which would be to yeah. do the, pr the preliminary uh, feasibility study. Um, uh, so I, I think I, 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 I did send it to Tom and I don't know who else I sent it to, um, uh, but we have full permission. I have full permission to plagiarize their application. Um, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so it, to, to me, I think we have everything that we need to file our grant proposal. Um, I, I don't know if, um, but Bob, did I send you that stuff? You sent me the letter that you wrote to him originally. All right. Um, yeah, they, 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 they sent back they, they, with, their, with their PDF, with their grant proposal. Um, and um, they, they, they um, they, they, there's, they, they also are going to be working with the town, a couple of towns underneath them. Is it Ash? What's the town near them? Ash, Ashfordian, Ashburnian? I don't know. 
um, I forget the name of it, um, but it's a, it's a very rural town. And uh, um, that town is interested in participating with private landowners. So through this program, a mechanism is going to be able to be created so that private landowners could get carbon credits for their private forests at no cost to them. With like carbon credit, like money, they could sell, the, the town would, together we would get carbon credits and then um, the people that own the forests that those credits are based on could finally, we could end up with money in their pockets. Um, but yeah, that, and that's based on the fact that these programs exist, that, that, that the one um, that recently concluded in Westfield, West Springfield, et cetera, those three towns did really split $2 million um, for selling the carbon rights to their forests. So um, that's what I'd like to explore. Mm. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Tom? No, I don't have anything new. So is Tom <laughs> gonna write the grant based upon the Williamsburg grant or are we gonna do What's that, Bob? Who's gonna write the grant? Yeah, um, it, um, I'm gonna do it. I'm, I might ask Tom for some help, Tom. Um, but uh, sure, because uh, I think I think Tom is the one that signs it on behalf of us. But um, if I can help, let me know. I you know this sounds wonderful. Yeah, it's the grant. The grant itself is three pages, uh, and um, the 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 main part of it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's three pages, and it's basically already been written. You know, we do have to change a lot of it because we don't have the same acreage as Williamstown, and we don't, you know, etc. But um, they, it's it's to get it's to get the ball rolling. Once the feasibility study is done, then the next steps would be to actually get um, enrolled in a carbon uh, credit program. Um, and then they're sold on the open market. But, you know, I learned a lot about um, um, how right now is a really good time to do this, if it's possible, because our, our local, our state, our academic, our higher education, uh, everybody from Williams College to UMass to Amherst College, they all have directives to purchase these things, um, to purchase carbon credits, and, and a desire to do so locally and there's no products for them to purchase right now. Um, right. May I ask what it means to sell carbon rights? Yeah, that means you, you're set, instead of cutting the trees to get money for lumber, you grow the trees and get money to be Boston's carbon sink. Okay, so they, they can't, um, They don't have any other right to the tree, though. Um, the, the, there, would be, there would be things that you'd be signing saying that you're not going to cut the trees for X numbers of years because you're being paid not to cut them, basically. Okay. Um, okay. We, which right, is so, brilliant, which is amazing so, and brilliant. So, Phil, you're going to work with Tom on this? Yes. And Bob, how is, how is yeah. Peggy, Peggy going to be involved in this? Peggy Sloan? Kind of minimally. Um, yeah. She's willing yeah. to review the, the draft, um, but we'll have, to, we'll have to submit it and administer the grant ourselves. Great. Can I say- Are we at under time pressure here? Yeah, we got two weeks, uh, three weeks, two and a half weeks. Something? Yeah, it, it, it's not bad. Priscilla? Yeah. What's that? Can I say That's something? Yeah, go ahead, Priscilla. Okay. I think that it might be worth maybe putting into that grant um, some kind of evaluation of whether the Conway State Force could be included in with that carbon trust. And maybe, you know, I know that the, um, the monies we get for um, in lieu of taxes, the pilot money has been going down. Isn't that correct? So I wonder if the state were to, in lieu of pilot money, let us use those state force as part of the carbon trust. 
I wonder, you know, we should, I think we should look at that and see if that's something that would be beneficial. And maybe that could be included in there. So Priscilla, I, I actually, uh, that question came to my mind or that thought came to my mind and I actually have inquired about that. And I, I'm informed that to do so would require a, an actual act of the legislature. Yeah. Um, and that you have, you know, a better chance of selling snowballs, you know, wherever. I mean, it's just not that you can't get those types of things done. But um, what is what 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 is more more potentially doable is um, enlisting the permission of neighboring towns that own substantial tracts of wooded areas in, in the form of reservoirs um, who have never ever paid us any pilot uh, agreement. And that in lieu of um, any future or past demands for pilot payments, um, sign over forest management rights for carbon sequestration purposes. purposes. And I'm told that that um, has a potential to be favorably received, which would dramatically expand the town's acreage um, in such a program and thus the town's revenue. So um, that's something that I'm going to be following up on imminently. All right, thank you, Phil. All right, anything else on uh, the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership? All right, I think we've exhausted that. All right, next item on the agenda is the annual town meeting discussion. Um, you got a comment on the budget? Um, well, I've given you all my comments on the budget. Um, I would like to have a signed warrant in three weeks. So with all of the issues that I presented in that uh, Word document, um, I would like to hear what the select board thinks about those and how soon you think we can, we can have a budget to present to the town. You're talking about your notes, your notes, uh, Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Um, essentially, we have enough money to cover an anticipated revenue shortfall. There are various ways of doing it. Um, and I think I've laid out all my ideas about those, uh, at this point. Um, it would help, of course, if we had some idea of how much the schools might cut, but not knowing that, I think if we just, um, we can go ahead and pass a budget that authorizes the original amount that they asked for and not run into any problem with not having given them what they need. They would presumably not need all that money, um, but I don't know when they're going to, uh, when they're going to have a budget. And uh, to my mind, it, it's just proceeding on the path we were anyway and using our stabilization and free cash to fill in any gaps that may occur. The, the 318,000 that we need uh, projected is for the whole town. So whatever the school ends up not spending comes out of that money too. Um, we have plenty of money in stabilization uh, to, to, to go towards this. If it were just the town side, um, we could pay for the entire thing through general, stabiliza general stabilization. Um, but since um, we can't count on that and we don't know what the schools are going to do, I think it's useful to kind of pretend that we need more money and have the town authorize spending general stabilization and free cash on our operating budget for next year. Normally, I would run away from a proposal like that, um, but this is a situation in which we need that kind of assurance. Yeah, absolutely, Tom. Right? This is a strategy. So I, I have looked at this, and I, I, I got to say that I am not really in favor of the concept of pretending we have more money. I t in my life, that's never really worked out too well for me. Um, um, so that I think that was the wrong word that Tom used. I think we're just estimating that if we have a have a deficit of of three hundred eighteen thousand dollars, we can cover that, okay, with uh, stabilization and free cash. So we're not we're not in a position where we're we're really uh, 
you know, running out of money here. And, and I, th I think that we're, I think that in, in general, it's to our benefit to be as flexible as possible and to really wait um, to, un, um, until we have to put together. Uh, every week we get greater clarity. Um, well, generally speaking, it's a trend of more clarity as time goes by. Uh, and that it's to our benefit, you know, the, the, I, I think what the state is really, all the states are waiting on is phase four of a federal bailout. And, you know, that they're, they're, the, the numbers that are being talked about are really big numbers, and that would help our state out a lot, and it would, which would help us out a lot. And those questions can be resolved within, looks like they're going to be resolved possibly within the next few weeks. And, um, I, you know, John's frowning. I don't know if John agrees with that, but it's possible. Well, I, I, I think there's going to be, still be a lot of uncertainty at the end of our fiscal year, okay? And I think that, um, you know, I discussed this with Tom, I think it was uh, last week we discussed this, this strategy, um, and it, I think it's very sound for us right now, uh, considering the uncertainty that's ahead. And again, you know, we don't know how much uh, of the state rainy day fund they're going to interject into um, uh, their budget. So, you know, I think we're, we're in good shape in terms of our stabilization funds. We're in good shape we're in, when it comes to free cash. Uh, we can always, you know, throw a couple of capital items overboard if we have to. Uh, but overall, we're in pretty good shape in terms of looking at our own budget. And, you know, the schools are another story. Um, hopefully, there's no um, Chapter 70 money cut, uh, and the schools will be able to at least do some uh, some level funding um, into you know 2021. You know, but I think we're in pretty good shape. But John, yeah. I, I think Tom is looking for enough direction from us to to start really working on the budget and. We may, you know, it, it all looks good, but he's, he's presented us with this menu of choices like, do we think it's a good idea to move some of the spending back to stabilization rather than free cash? And, and I think that's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, should, should we be anticipating that there may be budget reductions in the schools, even a little bit? Well, um, you know, well, like, for instance, for the grant we saw last week, maybe for the grammar school, there could be an eight thousand dollar reduction. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but, yes, Philip. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. But the but, superintendent is being encouraged to look at reductions in this year's budget because the school is closed all day. And, you know, they must save some money doing that. And, yes. And there the, um, there is a possibility for some savings with regard to our transportation contract. Um, um, but there, there's also, you know, you don't want to have to at the same time refund money from to the state for your transportation contract savings um, as well. So th those are complicated issues. You don't just get to keep what you save you because you've been paid for that. So you, um, yeah, uh, and, and there's a whole lot to it like that. There's things that on its face look like they might be savings, but at the same time, there's increased demands for spending and there's a whole there. There's there's a lot of issues that have come up that to uh, th that have the potential to be costly. You know, there there's a whole segment of the teaching population that is at risk, um, uh, and is and this is true all over the state, the statewide. The teachers, sure. the teachers union is asking for legislation that would allow teachers at uh, over 60 to retire. Um, to, to just move the clock forward as many, you know, if, if you have a compromised health condition and you're over 60 and you're a teacher, um, to move the clock forward as it, to, to, to make you fully retired. And those types of legislative remedies would be very expensive to the towns. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, but those are some of the things that are being asked right now on a statewide level, um, but also, you know, locally. And that th those, there's a lot of stuff going on like that, that, um, uh, ha has the potential to drive costs up and not down like you would mm -hmm. think. So, yeah. 
that, and that, certainly, but we're not going to find out about those things probably until well into next year, next fiscal year. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I do know that, that that you know, I think Bob, I guess you're referring to that was a letter from Sunderland that that spelled out specifically what they wanted to, and, and I, I thought that that letter was very appropriate and reasonable, and it's what select boards should be doing. Yeah. Um, and, and and so you know, I don't. I, I, and my understanding is that that was already well underway, um, the, an analysis of that nature. I do know I was just summoned to an emergency budget frontier budget committee meeting um, Wednesday afternoon. So, um, so I, I take it those things are related. Uh, um, but um, you know, and, and I, you know, the the one thing about all this is that right now, you know, this is my fourth superintendent. This is by far the best one we've had. Um, yeah. Like it's not close, uh, and I, um, there, there's not a better. He's this is the guy that we that I would want to you know if you could just design one for to be in charge of that school during a crisis like this, that's the guy. And um, uh, you know I, I I have trust and faith that he understands exactly the, the what the town's needs are, and that um, he will he will you know, balance the, the, the relative needs in a, in a fair and equitable way. Um, and he's being very reasonable right now. But, yeah. But, but I, th I think we do need to get the warrant out. And we, you know, we're, we're talking about a late, a late June town meeting. And that means sometime in May, which it's now May, uh, you know, getting, you know, Getting the warrant finished and and sent to the printer. And yeah, I mean, I, I did I did like Tom's idea of the June twentieth, um, you know, the twenty first. Yeah, we, we yeah. can't we can't do anything about that until next week. I, I, I no, but but, but I maybe Tom. next week we Tom could bring a a budget proposal and of of real numbers and say this is my best guess as to what I think we should do for for the town budget for next year and these we we have some time to get a warrant out so that would now include authorization to spend stabilization and free cash on the operating budget yeah. with the hope that we would not have to use much of that money but with the assurance that it would be available if we did exactly because what we want to do is keep our operating budget in place as much as we can. Okay. We got to throw some, might have to throw some capital items overboard, but we need to keep the operating budget in place. Uh, the way we want it to move forward for next, the next fiscal year. And, and even with a capital item, if, if we move that highway truck and we fund it with capital stabilization, which we can, um, we don't need to throw it overboard. Yeah. yeah. And we need the truck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a scheduled replacement. It's not a new request. But you, John, you're right. We have time to do it, but, but we don't have very many weeks that we can keep delaying deciding what, what we want the budget to be, or at least what the budget is we want in the warrant. Right. So. Right. Well, what we're, what we're going to do next week because next week is within that 30 day period that we can extend again. Okay. We can't do that until next week. Next week we could decide to extend over to the June 20th date. Okay. So that gives us another couple of weeks. Which is not a long time to look at a, um, a draft warrant, a revised draft warrant and make the make the policy decisions but um i think i think i've given you enough information so that you can see what the what the parameters of the discussion are and and think about the options that you prefer i'm happy to present an option uh but i'd rather not um you know present an option and then have people say, oh, no, no, we, we don't like that option. Uh, why don't you try something else or have three different ideas about how to go forward. So the discussion tonight has been helpful. Um, <laughs> and I'm okay putting together a warrant um, from that. Uh, 
but it would if you all have preferences, it would be very handy to uh, express them now. I mean, I, yeah, I, the, the, my preference is to have a leaner budget, and my preference would be to to um, to, to uh, survey every every town department head and ask what expenditure can be put to, can can be put off till next year. Because um, I know that you'd have a, a, a couple of volunteers, that, but that it's important that sacrifices be shared, that um, that that the capital that that the only the only victim shouldn't be the the highway department capital request um, or the schools. That that you know there's got to be you know it's it's true of the town administrator budget. It's true of other budgets that that saw significant pay raises or significant. Um, um, budget, uh, you know, uh, but budget increases. It's time to pare that stuff back. You know, it's not really. Well, I'm hearing the opposite. I'm hearing that Tom is looking at at cutting all of the town, some of the town budgets a bit, and not cutting the school budget. Well, and and, and the, the, see, there, that, that's, I mean, that's that that's sort of true too. But the, there's 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 more there's more there there's more there. Um, you know that, that and but and that there are some departments that have already put out a flat budget and that we should not cut um because they're, they're already flat you know i what what i uh you know Ken, kenny's budget strike you know kenny's budget was flat you know the i don't want to help is, is tough to cut the board of health because they got the trash costs exactly yeah so um but you know what what but um, this is just not in, in a year when 25% of your population lost their jobs and people are going to be losing their houses and their apartments in town that, you know, this is not the time to be adding staff and paying big raises. It's just not. And I, we're not adding, we're not adding staff. We're not giving big raises. Um, well, it depends how you define those words, I suppose. All I, right. I, I, Tom, Tom, what's your... With a with a June twentieth um, town meeting date, what's your what's your drop dead date to get the warrant out? Uh, I would like that signed May twenty fifth. Okay, so we're uh, that's Memorial Day. That's Memorial Day. So the twenty sixth. <laughs> okay. The, uh, it's it would be the twenty sixth because okay. the twenty fifth is Memorial Day. But that that gives us only. Um, three days to get it printed and to the mailer or or four days um and if it goes out on the 30th then people will get it um they need to get it too oh weeks. sorry right sorry there's there's an there isn't there is an extra week in there um yeah, yeah i would still i would still like it the 26. fine okay so um, that's three weeks from now if it, if it were signed June 1st and went to be printed and mailed and were, that's the Monday and we're able to get out on a Friday, then people would still have it on um, almost two weeks before the 20th. So, right. so really June 1st. But, but if we aim for the 26th, that would be very helpful. And, okay. you know, we'll need, okay. we'll need to talk with the finance committee as well to get their recommendations. Okay. So well, I'd like fair. to well, actually invite them to the next call. Okay. I saw Alan on this call earlier. Where'd he go? Weren't they on the agenda for last week? Uh, no, but Alan was on the call. He was, okay. but he's gone. Last week. So, so that's was, our timeline. Between now and the 26th, we got to get this this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda, the electricity aggregation, choosing a Conway rep. Oh, Bob's the Conway rep. Oh, no, wait. No, so let's, I mean, I'm, hap I'm happy to be the Conway rep, John. I didn't know if you would like to be the Conway rep. You no, 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 no. No, yeah. you're, you've done all the work on this, Bob. Okay, I mean, I'm happy to do it, but I want to give you, you know, no, I want you no, to feel no, like no, no. You you've done do the work on it, Bob. Uh, yeah, well, you're our rep here. <laughs> okay, you've led the way. Uh, I, 
I, I would plan on going to the meeting anyway. Just the question is, one of us is going to have to make the decision to sign. And I would, you know, if you would like to do that, John, we could both go. It would be fine. I, will auth I, I would vote to authorize you to sign. <laughs> okay. I, I don't think it will be a complicated choice, but. No, no, it's our bid, way, our bid day rep. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, not a big deal. So, and the, so then the other thing is to decide which of the options we would like to offer the people of Conway. The survey and, say. Okay, well, the, well, so the survey, the survey is a different issue, but Colonial is going to put out. They're going to get they're going to get bids on a number of different options, and their recommendation is we not have too many options that we offer. They just think it gets confusing. Yeah. So maybe yeah. and so right. one of those options is going to be the lowest price, um, you know, meets meets the law standard like Eversource puts out. No, yeah, you, need the, you need the basic, you need 100% and you need our default. So 100%. John, could you say that again in sort of complete sentences in the English language that I might be able to understand? Oh, okay. We so need, let's say we we're going to choose option. three different options, Phil. One of them is going to be whatever source is, is selling today for people that don't want to buy any extra green. Okay. Right? Yeah. So then we get some other choices. And, and one of the choices that they're going to get a bid on is called 100% national wind. And that means we would buy enough renewable energy credits to cover 100% of our electricity. And the thing is, national wind wrecks are very, very cheap. They're not New England class one wrecks. You know, and, and, and they're sold out of Texas or out of, out of the Midwest, and they help fund build new wind towers in Texas or out in the Midwest. And I don't support them, but, you know, it, it, it's something that people like because then they can buy them and they can say, they can strut out their chest and they can say, I'm, I'm a hundred percent renewable. And it's, but it's worthless, but people like them. And so, so we could, we could offer them as something people could choose. My preference would be that we don't offer them as something that people could choose because they do nothing for New England. My goal is, I mean, the reason that we, the reason electricity providers are required to buy these wrecks is to encourage more green generation in New England. We want people the, to build a, a new solar farm because they know they can sell wrecks to the utilities. And you would think of us as being a utility. Somebody might want to build a new hydro plant or they might want to build a wind farm off the sh offshore. And they, they can sell their wrecks to utilities that are required to buy them. And Eversource is required to buy some and that's the lowest amount. They buy the lowest amount they can buy. But as an aggregation, we can buy more than we're required by law. And there are people who like to support green energy and don't mind paying a little bit more to buy extra green electricity. And commonly, across the state, many, many people are choosing 5% more. So that's sort of a small amount, 5% more. But there, we're also going to get prices for 25% more, for 50% more, and for 100% more Class 1 New England wrecks. And Class 1 New England wrecks, to get 100% more, you're going to be paying a good deal more than Eversource. So I don't see many people choosing that option. But when, when we show up at the day when we open the bids, we're expected to say Conway's choices are going to be basic 5% and 25% or 100% national wind, or we're going to have to tell Colonial which ones we want. So that's what we're talking about. All right. And, and this is, you're only going to do this if the, if the price is in fact lower than what the published Absolutely. rate. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and then he would know. not. We, and and then and that's the price for the basic the basic one. You know, in other words, basic Eversource style power has to be less than Eversource. Yes. Right. And and the other thing is that it can't just be like a little tiny bit. It can't just be a penny less. It has to be like an actual savings because you are going to be disrupting everybody's lives that in the town once this goes through. Not disrupting so, their right, lives. Most of them will never no, the To the extent that it's a change of an electric, uh, you know, whatever. It's it's not like. No, a, you still you still get your Eversource bill. The only thing that changes is the name of the supplier on the bill. You probably have never even noticed that it says Eversource on your bill. And then, and you could you would have to search far and wide on your bill to locate where it's going to talk about the Conway aggregation. I, I did not a know that. little piece of text on the bill. That's the only change. I did not know that. Eversource no, no, services the exactly account. The they take care of the infrastructure. They do the billing. Everything's the same except the name of the supplier on the bill. So, so it would be good if today we could decide so that over at the end of this week, I could tell Colonial is anxious to know what our options are going to be. Well, you want, you want basic. Yep. You want a hundred percent. The fault going to be 5% more. Uh, okay. Well, so I would say then if we're going to have basic and we're going to have a hundred percent, then I would want to choose the percent that's still lower than Eversource, whether that's 5% or 25% or 50%. It's not going to be 25%. Well, I don't know. I'm just, just saying. So I think we want to have a choice that's as much green as we can get that's still going to be cheaper than Eversource. I like your thinking. And, and the reason I want that is that was overwhelmingly the choice of the people of Conway, like, like two or three to one. They wanted as much green, but still cheaper than ever source. Right. It's probably but John. So you want, you want to stick with a hundred percent national wind. Oh, I don't know whether you want to do that. You want to do a hundred percent. Class, class one. one. Oh yeah. You don't want to, we don't want to be a green washer, Bob. Oh good. No, I don't. I thought that was what you were proposing and I'm no. here trying to figure out how to talk you out of it. Oh good. Okay. So, Basic, 100%, and one in the middle that's still cheaper than Eversource. Right, which is probably going to be 5%. Which is that's okay. Be Great. I love it. Which is going to be the default. And then that would be the default, yes. Right. So you can, you can go down or you can go up. Right. The default. Okay. So, could, so can I make, can I make a, um, a motion that that is what I will tell Colonial? Of course you can. Those instructions. You want a motion for instructions. <laughs> All right. You want that motion, right? I would like that motion. Yeah, I make okay, that. I'll motion. second it. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. So instructed. Philip, yes. Um, so yes. instructed. Yes. yes. Great. Yes. Okay. And now we need now we need a motion to authorize Bob as our. Um, right. Representative yeah. to sign the electric, uh, the electric service, um, the electric supply agreement. I'll second John's motion. Okay. I'll vote aye. You, uh, <laughs> Philip? Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. So you're authorized now, Bob. Thank you. And instructed. <laughs> and instructed. No, that's, I like, I love the instruction. All right. So we're, we're all together. When does, uh, they're, they're going to go out, go for out. on the 13th, and we're going to have to vote on this on the 20th. When are they going to go out to bid? The 13th of May. 13th of May? Yeah. Do you think Eversource's rates will be out by then? No, they'll be out by about the 15th. Yeah. So in other words, we'll get the bids back on the 20th. Yeah, we're going to get the bids back after the Eversource rates come out. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll be around um, to, um, to, well, we, we could give you the authorization to accept the bid. That's what you just did, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. Yeah. We did by giving you authorization to sign. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're all and honest, Phil, all I will not sign else. if it's going to cost more. The, the whole point of this is that it's going to cost less. And, and hopefully it will cost 
significantly less. Right. Yeah. Do you have a, a um, bid day authorization form for us to sign? I, I haven't seen it, but I assume they will. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, next item. Maya insurance renewal for fiscal year 2021. Philip, you had some questions on this? Yeah, um, uh, I wasn't able to, to get in touch with the, the fella. I, um, my questions were still poorly formed and totally unanswered on account of they are so poorly formed. Um, so um, can we push this off one more week? Philip. Yes, I know. That one slipped through the cracks, but I've been jammed up. <laughs> uh, that's up to Tom. Um, Tom, Tom do, do we have another week on this? Uh, I don't know. I'm looking right now. I, I'm, I may not be able to answer that right now. have to pull up the paperwork. So, so I, you know, I, I did, I, I did really try to do some research with the, um, the commissioner of insurance in our state and everything, because what, what, the, what I, what, I wasn't able to talk to the gentleman that I wanted to talk to. Um, so, so my knowledge is really sketchy on all this stuff. Um, so, but, but the, 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 it's an eight, they're called, it's an 18% increase to us this year over last year. And my understanding- that, That's of, just based on workers' comp, isn't it? No, no, 18% overall. 18% year over year. Yes, but the majority of that is because of this one workers' comp claim. Well, yeah, or at I, least the lion's share of it. My understanding is that-, that, that um, Plus we have a new shed. So, so that, that it, it's because the, the, there were substantial claims made on MIAA last year um by their by, by their insured towns more so than was anticipated such that they had unanticipated losses of revenue and that the member towns are being asked through this rate increase to sort of make some of that up um well, and that's and what I, insurance that's what insurance is yeah but um but but small insurance companies are more susceptible to big swings than larger insurance companies. And, uh, you know, it, uh, but I, I, I was trying to, to, to sort of discern what, you know, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And um, I needed to talk to that gentleman, um, but I haven't been able to. Who are you talking about, Mick? Uh, I got to look at the email, I'm sorry. Tom, did, did uh, Philip want to talk talk to Mick? Yeah, he's our account executive. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we knew this increase was coming. Um, and I, I do not see a date on the uh, renewal summary. All right, we've, we've got to vote on this next week. All right. So, Philip, do right. the research you need to do. All right. And and Tom, can you can you help uh, facilitate between Philip and and Mick on this? He already he already did. Oh, he did. He already did. Okay. Okay. All right. Next item: uh, new business. We've got to sign a mortgage discharge for um, a mortgage that we've had on a property in town here. I move to sign the mortgage discharge. Does everybody, does everybody understand that? Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion that we <laughs> sign that discharge. Do I have a second? second? Yes. Yes. All in favor, Philip? Yes. Robert? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. Okay. Yeah. I think it was very appropriate. You didn't have to name their names and I'm glad you didn't. You didn't have to. Well, that's why I didn't. I. <laughs> Next item, request for chapter 90 funds, reclaiming and paving a section of Waitley Road. Uh, yeah, this is a, 
a normal Chapter 90 request from Ron. Um, he's had this here. on his... Oh, Ron, you're there. Great. I am here, yes. Hey, Ron. Hi. My first question, Ron, do we have to do this paving now? Well, it's probably going to get more expensive, I'm guessing, if we wait till the next contract bidding contract you know I'm, I'm looking at this in terms of you know the state budget and what's going on and uh, you know we can we can use chapter 90 funds to buy equipment right yeah I would highly discourage that thought we can um, we can right only because only because the roadways are in such need we have okay, is this one of these situations where it really is is needed? It's very bad. Yes. Okay. It's, what it's, happened to roads? For? Excuse me. How much is this for? Two hundred and seventy-two thousand three hundred and twenty-five dollars, and I'm only doing at this point. I'm only putting a two and a half inch base down, and was. When the bids come out for next year, I was hoping to be at a chip seal, rubber chip seal, the top of it, because it is a highly traveled road. So okay. our residents use our residents use that a lot. It's Waitley Road, yes. It's a yep. highly traveled road. Okay. Right. Any questions for Ron? Uh, I mean, that's one of the roads that you get the most complaints about speeding drivers from the residents. And this is one of those things that they complain about the road. And then as soon as you fix the road, they complain about the speeders. So, yeah, that's a road that is in, very inviting to speed on. Yeah. So you, you want it a job, in bad Ron. shape? <laughs> What's that? What's that, Ron? You, you want it in bad shape so they don't speed? <laughs> you know, there's wisdom to that. Um, but, well, there really but, but, isn't, but, but. but the thing about that is that that's sort of like a, a, an unfair tax on the residents because it's, you know, two bar, you know, bar joints for everybody, you know, whatever, bar, you know, er, tie rods, tie rods all the way around. All those so do you things. want so, me to refer the residents to you when they complain about the condition of the road? Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Because I kind of, I kind it works the other way. I kind of refer them to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Ron, Ron, how many miles are we going to get out of this? Uh, the, it's 9,000 feet, so just under two miles. Just under I two think. miles. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Other questions for Ron? Do it. No. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the request for Chapter 90 funds for the reclaiming and paving of a section of Waitley Road. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Philip? Yep. Yes. Robert? Aye. Myself? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, the page on that. There are papers to sign. All right, I'll, I'll be in in the morning. Yeah, uh, they, were, they uh, should be at least two select board members for that. Phil, there's another item for you to sign from last week's warrant, and then there's the warrant from uh, this week, the, uh, the makeup. Oh, of, you, of the, oh, the small amount. You sent me about a note about that last week too. That's another thing that I forgot. I'm sorry about that, Tom. Yeah, just waiting for you. You're staying Tom, too much, Philip. You, know? you can sign for me. That would be okay. An electronic signature. I thought the state was working on that. No need. No. Oh, yeah. That they've done it, but only for notaries. Uh huh. All right. Items unanticipated, Thomas. Um, yeah, we wanted to, um, postpone the, uh, Jermaine scholarship, uh, deadline, um, since it's already gone by <laughs> and, 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 and we, we have, we have received applications, uh, Lisa's working on those now. So, um, Lisa, I don't know if you can, uh, you can pick up the phone with one hand or, uh, stop typing with the other and, uh. Uh, no, I haven't. I, I have. I. I. Um. All I know is, I got in touch with the Frontier Guidance Office to ask them if they thought 
their time was going to be extended on, you know, the other end, like for colleges and universities because of what's been happening. If they were going to be giving people more time to get their paperwork in, and they said it's about a 50-50. So, you know, I was trying to figure out if it was going to make any difference to give them some more time uh, to get their applications in. So I think it, it might, and that's really the, the most I can say about it. Um, they might be, you what know, we they might. Give? What time do we want to give? Well, uh, it was supposed to be April 17th was the deadline oh. um, for anybody applying for a Germain scholarship. Um, and do so we, we have much, got... Many, do we get many uh, requests for applications that haven't come in yet? Uh, no. No. Okay. How many applications do we have so far? I think we have three. Only three. Yeah, yeah, not many. Can we extend it till, um, say, the middle of May? Yeah, that would. I think that would be good. I think that would help people out. And um, I'll, I'll uh, put something on the, the website about it. Mm, go ahead. How about the eighteenth. That's a Monday. May eighteenth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Is that good? Do you guys agree? Yeah. 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 Is that good? All right. All right. So we'll extend okay. it to the 18th and hope we get a couple more um, applications in. Right. Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thomas, and I actually, I actually have one more item. Another. Okay. Yes. Um, unfortunately, uh, very unanticipated. Um, <clears throat> really shouldn't have been unanticipated, but we did the budget really early. And then the highway garage went through really quickly. And uh, we're going to be bidding, they're, they're going to be starting work on it. So we actually need to get the debt. Um, we need to borrow very soon. And we're, we're in the process of doing that. Uh, but that means that we will need to pay off our first year's debt in fiscal year 2021. Often when we authorize borrowing, it doesn't, we don't go out to bid until the following fiscal year. Well, this time we authorized the borrowing back in the fall. And um, neither Jan nor I uh, added the amount to the debt service that we were, um, that's on the, uh, on the warrant. Uh, it uh, it um, is coming down. Um, because of the the fire truck borrowing, but this this is going to add another seventy seven thousand dollars to the debt service, uh, and that's assuming we get twenty five thousand from free cash for it as well. That was that's been the plan for borrowing. We hadn't planned it for next fiscal year. It still fits within our budget. We it, we're still within our levy capacity. We can still deal with it through free cash and and general stabilization. Um, but I thought I would spare you the shock of finding out next week when you're looking at the warrant that we will need to raise our debt service for the garage borrowing. Everybody clear on that? Yeah. Have you yes. told Alan Don't... yet? What? You clear on that? Yeah. Tom, uh, do you have an update? Uh, yeah, pretty brief. Um, the Board of Health has received information showing that if they separated glass from the other recyclables, they could save substantially on trucking, breaking even in four years. However, this would involve a new $20,000 in costs, which they understand might not be possible this year. But whenever they do it, they'll be able to save, they'll be able to uh, um, make up their costs in, in four years. Uh, one of two towns in Franklin County for which that's true. Uh, in putting other- Separating glass, putting it in a separate place? Yes. 
how, how long do those machines last? And then after they break even, how much would having that machine save us every year? Mm. Uh, I don't know. That uh, Carl just let me know the basic plan because he knew that it probably wouldn't um, work this year. But I mean, expenses like that can can sort of really rise in the rankings for me in terms of desirability to undergo um, if the, if there's a, if it's a good investment. I mean, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's expenses and then there's investments. So uh, you're, you're talking about a four year payback period for a twenty thousand dollar machine. Right. So then so that's five thousand dollars a year. A year after that. Could we just put it off to if the machine year? lasts 10 years? Right. Well, can, I, can we I think, Bob, can we put it off for next week and then have Carl or someone come in and we can discuss the numbers sort of more specifically? And, yes. Sure, and absolutely. Let, let him make a better case. Let, let let him make a you know the strongest case possible. No, no, Phil. I was actually saying, could we put it, put it off till next year? I mean, oh, you, you know, rather uh, than spend it in this year, that's got a lot of other problems. Right. I mean, that's true too. But in the meantime, this is still good information that we should have. Sure. So yeah. Good. We'll get sure. Carla, come in. Yep. Um, I hope that the second issue of Conway Currents out. Currently, I'm paying for the mailing and then getting reimbursed. Apparently, the post office doesn't take credit cards for bulk mail. Mm. I have a town credit card, but have to use my personal debit card. Perhaps the town could get a debit card for this use. I've written a treasurer to ask if an account could be set up. Yeah, we'll definitely, uh, and then, we'll definitely do that. Um, is this one of those uh, things about the postmaster, individual postmaster's discretion? Uh, it's like, probably, no, I, I, I have no idea. All I know is that um, that's how Greenfield works. Um, Peggy Sloan had asked for, uh, oh yeah, never mind. Uh, I already went over that. Phil did get the information from Williamstown. Yeah. And just finally, you probably know that the governor has or issued an order mandating wearing face masks in public if you're within six feet of anyone else starting Wednesday. Yes. I and know. that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Tom. In terms of the select work. Philip, so yes, it, it doesn't have to be a face mask. It's just a face covering. It can be a covering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your you can bandana. Wear your bandana. Bandana. Yeah. bandana. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Philip, John, do you have I, any concerns? I, I thought that the information from this morning that, that the tracing, you know, the, the contact tracers are experiencing resistance in our in our local communities is was disturbing to me. And I would just put out the call out there that if you do get the phone call from, you know, your state health department advising you that to save your neighbor's lives, you need to quarantine for 14 days in your house, please do so. And uh, um, if you have trouble getting supplies or getting food during that time, give, a, give the town a call, give the Board of Health a call. There's a lot of places that can help you. I'll help you, I'll drive food out to you leave it in your door, but that's about it. Now, now you know, is that ane anecdotal information you have or is this, this fact? No, this was, uh, this was relayed. He didn't, the, the Deerfield police chief didn't name the specific town that was having the issue. Um, the, oh, it's not us. It's not Conway. Um, no, the, the way he mentioned the towns and when he was saying, he said the three, he said the, the, he said, he said, especially Conway. Um, but he didn't come right out and say, that it was us, but um, it's mm. one of the four towns, and it could be us. And in case anybody's listening that has any impact on any any of this, go quarantine. So, all right. So what they're doing with this tracing is they're calling people that they know have been in contact with somebody who is either sick or they have gotten tested and they're maybe asymptomatic. 
It's and both. Sick people. It's sick people. It's they've been in contact with sick people who've tested positive. And and then they ask them where they've been. And the, well, they they call up. So the Deerfield Police Chief relayed the experiences of um, a number of his officers who have been contacted by them, and they report that all the details in the in were wrong. That Boston, that the Boston CTC people had the wrong dates of the meeting with the people, the wrong times of the day. Um, and that it sort of set all those conversations, it, it turned all those conversations from the very beginning into sort of um, not as, uh, you know, positive and uplifting as they could have been. Uh, uh, so. Okay. So there's another <laughs> factor here to people yeah. saying, you know, don't call me or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it, it, contact tracing is a difficult thing to do and do it accurately. And, and our state is leading the country in the uh, attempt to do it. So right, right. Didn't didn't we uh, didn't we get a uh, an app for that? Are we looking into uh, they're talking about it? I don't think they have one yet. Right, right. Okay. But yeah, they, there's an outfit called uh, what is it? Globe Track or something? Is that what it is? Globe Track. Well, anyway. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Yeah. Any other concerns, Philip? Um. No, I suppose that's it. Oh, good. Okay. Um, John, I have a concern. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I really thought that we might vote on this, but I don't think it's something we need to vote on. But so the, the, all the conservation commissioners got a note from MACC, our Massachusetts uh, Association of Conservation Commissioners, and they're very strongly opposed to a bill that Governor Baker is trying to push through right now that would uh, the, the, the title of the bill is an act to mitigate arborvirus in the Commonwealth, but it would exempt the state mosquito control board from all state laws and allow them to conduct mosquito eradication anywhere in the state, regardless of the municipality's wishes. And, uh, and, and MACC, the, 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 the Association of Conservation Commissioners, just feel this is way too broad and, and it, it cuts out all the town board of health, uh, you know, work they've done on trying to control where you can spray and where you can't spray. And there's no sunset provision in the bill. And so I wrote to Bruton, our chair of our Conservation Commission, to see if you know, he might want the select board to also take an action on this, but I haven't heard back. Well, let's let's put a, a letter together, a letter of support, and we can yeah. sign it next week. I think that would be great. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, yes. Okay. Philip, you okay with that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I the my, my thoughts about this are just you know also that we have the the select board in a neighboring town is very heavily invested in our local cook, uh, mosquito control commission that there's yes, she is yep <laughs> and and, uh, and is constantly um, sharing with me that that you know that they are not the boogeyman that, that you know they they mean so well that they're so environmentally friendly it's so up to date that they don't hurt anything that they're you know and what a necessary and don't you remember West Nile and how everybody lost their horse and and you know. And, and all this, uh, yeah. Um, so I, 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 I wonder what, what, our, what our neighbors and friends um, in that town think of uh, this sort of thing. So that's what was going through my head, but. Okay. Uh, all right. Thomas, would you work with Bob to put a letter together? Sure, be happy to. Okay, very good. I have no concerns. Everything is so great that, that I just <laughs> have no concerns. Okay. Um, here we are in week, starting week seven of uh, our lockdown. Give me a couple more weeks. I may have some concerns. <laughs> All right. Uh, That's pretty funny, John. Well, we're in a t-shirt, hey, John. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be as, as humorous as possible. It's a good, good deadpan know. delivery, too. Did you, did you get that? Hey, you know. All right. Uh, any other business? No more business. Okay. Our next meeting is scheduled uh, via Zoom.
via Zoom on uh, May 11th, which is next uh, Monday at six o'clock. Great. All right, if there's no more business to come before the board, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Yes. Okay, Philip says second. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Hey, thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Good meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. Thomas. Bye.